a lot of operations on that too. Now you're usually pretty like that. Okay. Uh, the other one we can't do because it has an ISO set crown. The first smaller accelerator. We can't get a read. But we did have a previous. Okay, number uh, number twenty nine. Five. Raise that uh, wheel there. Go to number five. Five. Uh, Twenty four. No, 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 no. Not yet. I want to go past. Oh yeah. You wait. Yeah, wait until. Wait until she feels it. The patient feels it, that's what they stop at. The patient feels it, that's what they stop at. Okay, but it's not non-vital, it's a vital. Yeah. 
you had the disturbance. Ed, you got a correct. Dennis made this term, but I didn't see that. See, they're going to leave them. Well, we're going to do that. And one of the symptoms that uh, she had, she had uh, with the anxiety, uh, just like Cutting described, she wanted to tear her heart out, okay? Uh, or pull it out of there to get it to quit beating. Is that right? So, uh, and when we know the heart problems from the uh, malpose third molars. Right? Any reduction in those symptoms? Absolutely. What's the reason for taking them? None. That's why we're still working here. Okay. Uh, number 24 we're on now. Lower left one. Number one. Number one. <laughs> Okay, number two, lower round, uh, left two. Upper uh, right. 
first mower. But of course, this spit can only be measured once. And uh, it doesn't matter whether I uh, choose number four or number five. Once the gap is filled, testing may, does, uh, does not make possible any more differentiation. But one thing we ought to know. Considering the interrelations between the organs and the teeth, you all have this chart. These interrelations are only valid for a normal uh, set of teeth. If one tooth is removed, uh, all the teeth wander to another place and uh, this also changes in a way those interrelations uh, in most cases the uh, molars will move up to the front towards the front and therefore also the interrelations will move more up to the front so you see that also these interrelations are not absolute uh, actually it is only valid for a set of teeth where none is missing Another thing, if we perform the stimulation, the current test, I like to use the low pressure electrode. Uh, it looks like you see on this chart. The low pressure electrode um, is carved into at its end if you apply this electrode to the skin the tissue liquid uh, by, uh, because of the pressure of the, the, of the middle of this pencil in a very short uh, way, just oh, in Bruchter, just fraction. just a fraction of a millimeter. Here in the graben, wo ja kaum Druck ist. The liquid, the tissue liquid, is attracted into 
this carving where there is no pressure und der Druck, der von dem Ball and the pressure that is affected by the surrounding der kann hier in den Graben und nach außen. can both penetrate into the carving and to the outside Auch auf Wege. also in a very short way this shape of electrode made it, po made it possible to reduce the measuring pressure from 1500 to 1200 pounds to 2 to 300 pounds so about one four, uh, four or five times as much because Dr. Woll and the members of the other societies they do not use this low frequency, uh, low pressure electrode but rather do they take a ball like electrode and they have to exert much more pressure but unfortunately this low pressure electrode was developed by myself I don't know why it is not introduced into practice but if you want to do the stimulation current test where you have to use the same point all the time it is very important to use as low pressure as possible because uh, the point changes in an inflammatory way and you get different results <laughs> so in some cases it may even be necessary to wait for two or three days before it, you, it is possible to use the same point again for measuring also for the patient this low pressure electrode is much more comfortable than the ball like electrode and may I add something else that pertains to the low uh, to, to the stimulation current test if you want to apply the stimulation current to the teeth do not take the measuring electrode but uh, have an extension that can be sterilized looks like on this picture that is the measuring electrode and that is the extension and uh, with that, uh, without difficulties, you, you can go into the mouth but you have to have several ones for uh, purposes of sterilization so you can use a different one for every patient you see it is easy to handle easy to put upon the electrode uh, if you want to test the mouth now if you want to measure we do exactly the same as is performed in techniques wir messen zuerst mal den Lymphmesspunkt rechts First of all, we measure the lymphatic measuring part of the right hand. Das ist nun im Stehen nicht ganz einfach. It's not so easy doing it standing. Ich habe hier einen Messwert von 68. The measuring rate 68. Und der Messpunkt hier liegt im Nagelbettwinkelbereich. The measuring point is situated at the edge of the nail. Am Übergang vom Schaft zum Köpfchen. <laughs> ja, vom Knochen, also von dem geraden Knochenstück zum the straight piece of bone zum uh, enters into the joint part of the bone. 
this low pressure electrode with the particular shape it makes it very easy to find the point uh, because it marks on the skin and you will always be able to find it again Na, wir bekommen mit dem Wert 68 einen ersten Hinweis. In the uh, reading of 68 gives you a first hint. Uh, what I am now measuring is the lymphatic drainage of from the head on the right side. And if it reads 68, there is no particular problem to be seen. As far as the lymphatic vessels are concerned. Meistens ist bei einem großen, bei einem starken Herd geschehen, allerdings ein sehr viel höherer Wert zu messen. In most cases where you have uh, many foci, the reading would be much higher. Ja. Noch eines muss ich Ihnen beim Messen sagen. May I tell you another thing about measuring? Wenn Sie den Punkt suchen wollen. If you want to find the point dann haben einige Geräte ein akustisches Signal. Some machines give you a, a sound signal. Ich habe das akustische Signal hier nicht. I do not have it in this machine. Weil ich das einfach auf lange Sicht nicht vertragen kann. Because I find it annoying to my ear to, to keep listening to this. Außerdem ist es ja so, also, dass das akustische Signal direkt mit dem Zeiger gekoppelt ist that the uh, signal, the sound signal, is coupled directly with the digit, also wenn der hoch geht, geht auch der Ton hoch, which means uh, if the reading increases, the sound gets louder, but I don't need my ear to notice that, I can also see it. So uh, the sound control is only um, of value for beginners. And it's also very interesting for, for the producing phone because it costs more. Wenn Sie jetzt so den Punkt genau bestimmen wollen, if you want to detect the point exactly, dann empfehle ich Ihnen, I advise you, excuse me, dass Sie den Krippen ganz leicht that very slightly, rather without pressure, you put the probe upon the finger. And you see immediately that the digit rises a little bit for about 10 grades. And then very carefully, without pressure, I walk around with the probe in where I suspect the point and where I find the highest reading that is the point uh, where I am now it's only five rates but if having found the, the point itself it's ten grades and if I walk away from the point again, it goes back to five. So with, if with very little pressure I uh, apply the probe and walk around for a little bit, you find the exact point. <laughs> It's correct? Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah? So. Das sollten Sie sich genau merken, denn das ist die exakteste Punktbestimmung, die ich kenne. That, uh, you ought to remember that because for me this is the most exact way of detecting the point. Nun machen aber viele Anfänger den großen Fehler. Many beginner uh, have a false way of handling this. That's the, uh, they leave the electrode in connection with the skin 
wenn Sie den Punkt richtig gefunden haben, und dann an zu drücken fangen, damit der Zeiger den richtigen Messwert gibt. Und das ist falsch, weil durch das Aufsetzen, durch das lockere äh, Aufsetzen der Elektrode bereits Ionen von der Haut abgezogen werden. And that is wrong because already by the loose uh, applying of the probe, some ions are uh, driven off the skin. Sie müssen also trennen. So you have to separate die Punktsuche und das Punkt messen. The detection of the point and the measuring of the point. Also noch mal wiederholt. To reiterate, ganz vorsichtig drüber fahren, carefully uh, walk along the area, wenn Sie den richtigen Punkt gefunden haben, once you have found the point, kurz markieren, dass Sie den Punkt wieder finden, shortly, so you will be able to find it again, dann mit dem Messgriffel weg von der Haut, remove the probe from the skin, und wenn es auch nur ein Bruchteil einer Sekunde ist, and even if it were just for one second, und dann erneut and touch the point again and then measure. So that is very important that the detection of the point and the measurement are two things that have to be separated. Otherwise you will always get too low readings. But something else I want to tell you, when during demonstration I'm having difficulties, I'm very mean leaving the probe on to the point without pressure. And then I start telling you something. Und dann gehen so viele Elektronen weg, dass ich dann den Zeigerwert 50 ohnehin erreichen kann. And then so many electrodes go away from the skin that automatically the reading says 50, and that's what I want to prove to you. Aber ich werde es dem Patienten zu Liebe bestimmt nicht tun. But um, if, uh, if it were for the sake of the patient, I must not do this. Sie sehen also, man kann auch hier, wenn man will, man die so you see, even here it is possible to manipulate, but uh, we must not cheat ourselves. I do not tell you this to enable you to manipulate, but it, uh, to enable you to find out your own mistakes. Please sit down. <coughs> Um, when you want to measure, it is very important that your hand is supported properly. Because you, if you have your hand free like this, it doesn't work. I can't measure in this way either. It's not possible. In a very careful way, I have to support my hand, have some uh, cloth between dass da kein möglichst wenig Strom auf den Patienten und auf mich übergeht. To make sure that as little current as possible is, transfer, is transferred upon the patient or upon <coughs> myself. Also ich dachte Ihnen ja schon, der Messwert ist 68. As I told you, the uh, measuring uh, reads 68. Das ist bei Lymphe 1. With uh, the point uh, lymphatic meridian number 1. Und? So what is I'll take note of this. RE stands for right. And LI stands for left. Now I use the organ preparation called tonsilla palatina, which is fabricated by the firm of Vala, and I reduce this reading to normal.
Dieses Organpräparat steht in Ampullen zur Verfügung. This organ preparation is available in ampoules. Ist also hergestellt aus einer gesunden Tonsilla Palatina. And it is made of a healthy palatine tonsil. Und ist homöopathisch zubereitet. And is potenced in a homeopathic way. Und steht jetzt in zur Verfügung in zehn verschiedenen Potenzen. This is available in ten different potencies. Wir können ja darüber später noch sprechen. Which we can discuss later on. Und zwar von 3, 4, 5, 6 bis 30. From 3, 4, 5, 6 X up to 30 X. Ich selber beginne immer mit der Potenz D6. I like to start with 6 X. Und geht zuerst einmal herunter, um den Messwert auf Norm zu bringen. And first I go down to bring the measuring reading back to normal. Und wir geben dieses, diese Ampulle the in ampoule den Messkreis hinein. Is entered into the measuring circuit. Sie können das auch so machen, dass Sie den Patienten auf diese inaktive Elektrode die Wabe setzen. Uh, we have a honeycomb-like device to hold the ampoules, and you could put the ampoules on top of the inactive electrode. Sie können es aber auch so machen, dass sie dazwischen schalten. But you can also interconnect it, uh, as you see here. Also machen wir es mal hier, weil es für meine Frau einfacher ist. For my wife, it is easier to have it in this way, uh, because she will hand me the ampoules. Bei dem Stand da draußen ist noch eine Wabe zur Verfügung. Vielleicht kann man die mal bekommen. Uh, could we please borrow the honeycomb that is outside? Ja, dann haben wir eine mehr. But to have an additional one. Jetzt gebe ich diese Ampulle D6 in so den Messkreis. I have the ampoule of 6x and I in, uh, include it into the measuring circuit. Und der, dadurch geht der Messwert jetzt zurück von 68 auf 60. This reduces the measuring reading from 68 to 60. Oh, that's so. But what I want is a reading of 50. Therefore, this indicates that this particular potency is not the right one. I uh, take out again 6x, and instead of it, I give it a try with 5x. Now it says 57. It is not enough yet. 4x now instead of 5x. 55. 3x. Forty-nine. Jetzt muss man statt D2 gibt es nicht. There is no 2x. Dafür nehmen wir zwei Ampullen D3. Uh, what I can use uh, two ampoules simultaneously of 3x. And two again it goes up to 57. That indicates that in this case one ampoule of 3x is optimal. If you have paid attention, you would have seen that I change ampoules as long as I have passed by the, uh, the normal one and have the reverse effect. So you see, I handle it a bit in a different way as Dr. Hall. Dr. Voll sucht den Wert 50. He exactly tried to find the reading of 50. Und ich suche den individuellen Umkehrpunkt. As for me, I search for the individual uh, point of reversion. Der ist individuell. 
und zwar individuell verschieden, sogar bei, oft bei der rechten und linken Körperseite. And it may differ on the right and left hand side of the body. Und er kann auch von heute auf morgen sich ändern. And it may also differ from today to tomorrow. Und ich finde, das ist exakter, als wenn man immer nur auf 50 geht. And I think that is more exact if, as if I always try to find the number, the, the, the number 50 reading. If you, use, if you use the 3 and a 4x, would that, huh? would that make any difference, the 3 and a 4x? 3 and 4 You yeah. say one three yeah. a ampule, yeah. but if you, and then you try two three ampules, and now if you try a three and a four. Yeah. My wife did this before. No, no, no. Three and four. We can try to having simultaneously three x and four x. It's also too high. Mm -hmm. But it reads too high. Good. Einmal die drei ist in diesem Falle, in diesem Falle richtig. In this case, we find that just one ampoule of 3x is optimal. Wenn, wenn Sie drei und vier nehmen, geht der Wert auch schon wieder hoch. If you uh, add the four x to it, you see a different reading. Also, vier wieder raus. Er muss er mit dem Organpräparat Silla Palatina in irgendeiner Potenz zum Ausgleichen sein. And if this is so, then this particular point has to be Uh, controlled by some potency of the organ pertinent to it. Ein anderes Beispiel, wenn das ein Messpunkt auf dem Dickdarm Meridian ist. For instance, if I measure uh, the large intestine point, dann muss dieser Punkt auch mit einem Organpräparat Kolon, also vom Dickdarm in irgendeiner Potenz auszugleichen sein. Then that particular point can be um, Equalized can be balanced with an organ preparation of some kind of code. <laughs> If that were not possible, dann wäre das kein Messpunkt für den Dickdarm. It would not be a measuring point for the colon, but for ja something else. Das ist die einzige Kontrolle, ob Messpunkt und Organ zusammengehören. So uh, this correlation between the point and one particular organ preparation makes this point a measuring point for that particular organ. Yeah. So, yes, that is the definition of the measuring point, that it corresponds with the organ preparation. When the Fragen zu Ende sind, are there any more questions? Can yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when do you measure the indicator drop? When the indicator drop goes down? If I work too much with the indicator drop, or, or rather, it is correct if I wish to work with the indicator drop. It shows us that, that the organ pertinent to this particular measuring point Energetisch nicht widerstandsfähig ist. has no resistance energetically. Das ist co absolut correct. And that is quite correct. Aber, But, wenn Sie bei jedem Punkt But if with every point den ganzen Zeigerabfall durchkontrollieren you want to test the whole uh, indicator drop dann müssen Sie manchmal bis zu 40 Sekunden warten. Sometimes you have to wait for a period of about 40 seconds. Und den Punkt 40 Sekunden drücken. And damit pressing sie, one point for 40 seconds. Damit Sie sehen, wo der Zeigerabfall aufhört. To see how far it will drop. Und dann wird der Punkt so stark belastet, is a strong stress to the point, dass Sie die andere Messung nicht mehr durchführen. That you can no more do the other testing afterwards. Also Sie müssen sich entscheiden, you have to make up your mind, ob Sie mit dem Zeigerabfall als Diagnostik arbeiten wollen, the indicator drop is the diagnosis you want, oder ob Sie mit den Organpräparaten diagnostizieren wollen. Or whether you want to go on with the organ preparation, uh, preparations as I do here. Wenn Sie einen Punkt zu lange drücken, If you press one point for too long, Sie nicht mehr you can no more use that point for further testing. 
Also, ich habe nichts gegen den Zeigerabfall. I don't mind. I, I think that the indicator drop is a good uh, diagnose. Und ja, ist eine gute Diagnose. Aber viel exakter geht es mit den Organpräparaten und den verschiedenen Potenzen. But I found it is more exact using the organ preparations in their different potency. Und wenn Sie einen Punkt sehr oft benutzen wollen, And if you want to use one point several times, dann sollten Sie ihn vorher nicht schädigen. You must not uh, injure it. Also Zeigerabfall unbedingt korrekt. It is quite correct to use the indicator drop, aber nicht jetzt für diesen Reizpunkt. But not for this particular stimulation test, stimulation current test. Sind wir fertig? All right. Ja. Hier ist noch eine Frage. Ja. Yes, we shall discuss this uh, uh, problem presently. You can also use so-called no-sodes, which is preparations of diseases, but it's a different technique. At this moment we are talking about uh, and demonstrating using preparations of organs that are healthy. I have to check it whether the point is still there. Nach 49. Still 49 with this 3x und, ampoule. Und jetzt schauen wir mal. <coughs> So uh, the diagnose with the healthy odonta is the first thing we try now. Und dazu gebe ich jetzt now ein Stromstoß, yeah. indem ich diesen Button drücke. Now I insert a current. Wenn ich diesen Knopf drücke, by ist Therapiestrom. Uh, pressing that uh, knob. Das ist dasselbe, als wenn, hier, button, als wenn ich hier am Gerät auf Therapie umschalten würde. Uh, um, pressing that particular button gives in the therapy current. Uh, uh, it is the same as if in the machine I was turning over to therapy, but I have a special button, so I can do it directly when having the electrode in my hand. Auf, das, auf die Schleimhaut. I now give uh, current im coronalen Drittel. In the coronal third on the gingiva. Considering this is the tooth. And this is supposed to be the gingiva and the bone. I apply the current here. In the <coughs> there are three. Uh, this, uh, seeing that the tooth can be divided into three thirds, I apply the current to the coronal third of the tooth. You could also apply it to the apical third. But what if this is the shape of the apex? Perhaps you put the, you apply the current here and the apex is somewhere else. So from experience, uh, the middle third has proved to be the safest. But you do not apply it to the tooth, but to the gingiva. If you were applying the current to the enamel, 
haben sie nicht genau den gleichen Effekt. The effect is not exactly the same. Denn der Schmelz ist ein Isolator. Because the enamel is an insulator. Ja, also besser hier auf die so rather das hat sich einfach bewährt. Use the gingiva and the coronal third of the tooth. We found that by experience. Every patient reacts individually upon current. I start very low. And I ask her, do you feel the current? A little or much? Mittel, medium. Actually, I have used very little current. Uh, luckily enough, with other patients, I like to uh, increase it much more. If with her I had used the current I like to use, she would have felt like on the electrical chair. So, your question, please. So, that answers your question. The intensity has to be found individuality, in individually with the tolerance of your patient. Yes. Yes, uh, indeed. I turn it up as far as it is just being tolerated because we call it the, the stimulation current test. As high up as possible but without hurting. I use the same point. Do you feel it? <coughs> so we shall gradually increase it. Of course, automatically I'll try to increase it. Uh, with this machine, I found that uh, intensity number three is the most common that is being tolerated. And on the other side, probably I shall have to go down with her. So I stimulate the tooth number one. And again, I mention this point at length number one. Und ich komme auf einen Messwert von 64. It gives me a reading of 64. Also, jetzt habe ich hier bekommen Stromstoß und 64. Resulted in a reading of 64. Remember, before we had to reduce it to 50. 49, rather. 
Again, after stimulation, I try an organ preparation that uh, pertains to that tooth. As a rule, I like to take the organ preparation of mandibula, 6, 6x. Zurück. See the reading going back to 57. 5x. 49. 4x. Goes up again to 64. See the turning point. With mandibular 5x. In Germany we, we put d5, put it as 5x. And again we come to 49 as originally. So the organ preparation mandibular 5x uh, was correct after we had the stimulation reading back to 49 as we had originally. Now, which is the diagnose? These are the potencies available from 3x to 30x of the organ preparation of mandibular. We received this reading, the best, the optimum reading we received with 5x. So which is the diagnose? If 5x, um, or uh, actually, if the um, 5x, 6x, or 8x are suitable to put it back to normal, that is normal. And that proves that in that area where I put the stimulation current, I have no pathological process in the mandibular bone. If in that particular case 15x would have fitted, the diagnosis would be an inflammation. Und zwar bei den 10 bis 12 ein leichter Entzündungsprozess. Und bei den 12 bis 15 in diesem Bereich ein mittlerer Entzündungsprozess. 12 x, 15x, a medium inflammation. Und hier weiter hoch. Und weiter ab. After 15x, a strong inflammatory process. So from this I get the diagnose. Uh, going down, I also want to tell you, D5 still being normal, but if it were D4, 4x and or once uh, 3x that would indicate a slight chronic process so uh, with the rising potencies remember we had the acute processes and with the lower ones we have chronic ones with uh, 4x, 
3x, it is a slight chronic one. If you have to use two times 3x, it would be a medium chronic process. If I have to use three ampoules of 3x, a strong chronic process. Very rarely do you have to use four ampoules of 3x. And in all my years, it only happened twice that I had to use five ampoules of So forget about that. So you see, that gives me my diagnosis. In combination with the stimulation reading. For in most cases, in this area, I find normal values, like in this case, 64 up to 70. Uh, if you have to contact it with inflammatory readings, normal, um, as a rule, it would have gone up to a reading to 80. So stimulation readings over 80. Uh, also, if you um, if you would have um, put it back to normal with the low potencies before um, you would have had to expect a, a reading of about 80 with the stimulation reading. So the uh, reading of the stimulation after having applied the stimulation current in a way corresponds uh, and gives you a, a hint of which potencies will have to be used to normalize. The reading only is valid for the particular tooth where I applied my stimulation current where the stimulation current was directly applied. And that is the very advantage of the stimulation test. That I can find definitely where is the pathological process. I just take down the measuring reading 64. Uh, I'm afraid we, we put it down in the wrong way in the beginning. This is not in What What do you feel is the best frequency? The best frequency is about 10 hertz. The best frequency always is 10 hertz. For instance, here you have the stimulation current. One tenth of, of a millisecond. And in between you have nine tenths of a millisecond. And again, one tenth of a millisecond. If you would use a frequency of one hertz, uh, it could happen that uh, the current is applied in, in the middle where it is zero, is no more a stimulation. You have to catch that point and with a frequency of 10 hertz, you really will touch one of those points. So generally, use 10 hertz for the stimulation.
Congress got statutes for completely healthy, which you have been able to raise the scale really? Wenn diese Zahlen vollkommen gesund gewesen wären, hätte man dann äh, den Tiger äh, hochbringen können. Well, that one is particular, uh, is, uh, is healthy. Wenn diese Zahl gesund ist, If it is healthy, dann kriegen Sie den Reizwert niemals auf 80. It never will go up to 80. Weil die Gegenregulation Because so gut ist, the counter regulation is so good, dass, sie, äh, dass der Körper das Let the body copes with it. So with a healthy odonton, you never get a stimulation reading of 80. Uh, but as a rule, it will go up to a maximum of 75, if at all. Uh, What's your question on this? Welcher Zahn war jetzt dran gewesen? Tooth number one on the right lower jaw. No, that is not correct. There is not the right or left uh, organ preparation of transilla palatina. Uh, when I left Germany, we did not have right or left, so perhaps you, you misread this. Another question? I can see from two items, uh, the reading not being uh, higher than 75, it is below 80, and secondly, uh, to put it to normalize it, a, fr uh, a potency also in the medium range was able to do it. So that is a double check for this organ being healthy, this tooth being healthy. It is very important that this potency I used for normalizing stays in the honeycomb for all subsequent measuring the next current which I shall apply to number two also will go through the honeycomb and this is what we are doing presently we had gone back to 49 now I ex use my extension again and I stimulate the tooth number two again into the coronal third of the tooth applying it to the ginger Das ist die paralysierte Seite jetzt Yes, and that is why we very much increased the stimulation current. And I put up the current as uh, high as it can tolerate. Just a moment, please. Let's do the measurement first. Jetzt bin ich hier auf 69 gekommen. And now it reads 69. Ja, jetzt sehen Sie hier. Here you see. Der Messwert 69. 69. Jetzt denken Sie, das sei der Zahn 2. This now is supposed to be the truth number 2. Der Stromstoß war hier. 
Der BR ging von 49 auf 69. The uh, current being applied to that point, the original reading having been 49, now the stimulation current, the current makes it go up to 69, with that too. So with a reading of 69, probably I can expect that also that tooth is healthy. Again, I use uh, the same organ preparation, mandibular, and again mandibular, and I take a 6x, and it goes back to 49, as a counter check, taking out, uh, taking out again 6x, and putting in 5x for the number 2 tone. It goes up to 55. No more correct. And another counter, con counter check. I have 8x. And here it says 62. So the nine with the D6. So the best to normalize and put it back to 49 is 6x or 2 or number 2. And uh, the digit is not a stands still. It does, the indicator does not drop. If I have normalized it, the indicator must not drop. It's very important to note. For tooth number 2, my wife put down for you. The stimulation reading was 69. So a uh, little different as with tooth number one, but it doesn't matter. And normalization was possible in with tooth number one, mandibular five eggs. And with tooth number two, mandibular six. But remembering what I told you, that is still normal and you have a healthy tooth. How much time do you have from the time you stimulate the tooth to go back and measure here? How much time do you wait for no matter. You can do it immediately. Uh, you can continue immediately. It doesn't matter. If you wait for a long period of time, is it still valid? The world of women has such a longer time to it will still be valid. Uh, perhaps there might be a slight change, but not much. So, in, in other aspects, you can make many more mistakes as with this time factor. The mistake is more, far greater if you press more or less than uh, as if you were waiting. So we have normalized it. Here by, by the lymph, we have now 49. And again, we see with the point lymph number one. Again, we have normalized it to 49. Now we have the next tooth. Number three, we stimulate the tooth number three. Did you feel it? Now we measure again. It is 70 with tooth number 3. Stimulation reading number 3 is 70. The first uh, diagnostic hint. As a rule, in the region, between 75 and 50 stimulation reading, it is normal.
Then not quite clear. Kann man nicht genau sagen. You can't really tell. Und hier hat meistens Probleme. And uh, more than it will be problems. Und unter 50 nach einem Reiz geht ja der Wert sowieso nicht. And below 50 after having stimulated is not possible. Was heißt Problem? Any kind of trouble that can occur in the with teeth or jaw. I can only measure the reading, but okay. I not yet have I found which kind of trouble. So we mark 17. And we try to normalize it back to 49. Again, uh, we use mandibular ampoule. 6x already brings it back to 49. I control a counter check with 5x over 60 and 5x again over 60. Optimum therefore is 6x. Mandibular 6x. If you uh, look at it in this chart, both uh, D, uh, 6x means healthy, also stimulation rating 70 means healthy. Nothing wrong with truth number 3. Würde man die Zähne durchtesten, ehe man die Gesichtspunkte nimmt? Na, Herr Kollege, das mache ich in der Regel ja. Yes, as a rule. Aber ich, äh, die Patientin steht vielleicht nicht lange genug zur Verfügung und sie will ja die Einzeldiagnose. Um, sie will, in der Regel würde man erst die Gesichtspunkte machen. Ich mache auch die anderen Gesichtspunkte zuvor und die Nagelmeldwinkelpunkte. Aber das kann ich später heute Nachmittag beim Kollegen demonstrieren ohne Patienten. Yes, uh, it, it's a good question. As a rule, I would do all the fingers, the nails of the fingers and feet first. I also would put the facial points first. But with this patient, she cannot stay all day. And what she wants is a diagnosis of her respective teeth. And the other things I shall be demonstrating with one amongst you, perhaps with yourself. So, <laughs> so you have uh, to bear with this because uh, for this particular patient it is important to find the readings of the respective teeth. Number four. Number four stimulated. I noticed that. Seventy-three. Using again mandibular to normalize. Six x. Six x. It gives. Put it back to forty-nine. Jetzt können wir etwas Zeit machen, gewinnen. Das mache ich jetzt nicht weiter. Ja? Also das ist korrekt. Uh, so to make it quicker, I won't put in 8x um, or 5x. We find it is sufficient to see because it corresponds with the 73 value. Uh, 
Now number five was stimulated. Of the zweiten Premola. Premola. Second Premola. That is 68. 68. Jetzt Ausgleich. Ja. schon wieder hoch auf 64. Uh, also, ist der Ausgleich hier möglich mit? Thank you. So here it is normalized with two amples of three. Ich schreibe mal auf, das ist, das machen wir einfacher, wenn man mehrere Ampullen braucht, zweimal, zweimal, ja, Mandibula, M heißt ja Mandibula D3. Well, if you use two amples, I put uh, two times M because it has to be, in inevitably has to be three X. That is not very expensive. If you see, I have an 80er value here. So having seen a reading of 80. And also I have here twice the three. You want twice the three X ampule. Also, Hier besteht an dem Zahn ein Prozess. So, uh, with this tooth we have a process. Der, uh, einer, der einer chronischen uh, Entzündung im Kieferknochen entspricht. Uh, which corresponds to a chronic inflammation in the jawbone. Von mittlerer Stärke. Of, um, of a medium size. Die rein nach Erfahrung mit to, konservativen Mitteln nicht ausgehalten. To my experience um, with a process of this extent uh, conservative methods alone are not sufficient. Jetzt schauen wir mal. Ich weiß jetzt nur die Verhältnisse im Kieferknochen. All I have tested up to now is what is present in the maxillary bone. Jetzt interessiert mich das Verhältnis in der Pulpa. I'm now interested about what will show up in the pulp. Und jetzt mache ich an genau der gleichen Stelle wieder einen Reiz. So I apply another stimulus, another stimulation to this same tool. Dann, wenn ich den gleichen Punkt erwische und den gleichen Reiz setze, muss ich auch den gleichen Wert 80 bekommen wie vorhin. I happen to find the same point and apply the same stimulus, it ought to go up to 80 again. Und den Wert 80 habe ich auch. And indeed it does. Jetzt gleiche ich aber nicht aus mit dem Organpräparat Mandibula. But now I do not use the organ preparation of Mandibula. Sondern mit Organpräparat Pulpa Dentis. But rather I use the organ preparation of the dental pulp. Und das mach mal. Pulpa Dentis für sich zuerst. And uh, this in the different potencies. Das bringt nichts. Six X. Die fünf. Is not good. Fünf. Five X is no good. 4x no good 3x no good twice 3x goes down to 49 
three times three eggs. 68 schon wieder zu hoch. Rising up to 68 again. Also. So we mark. Wieder zurück hier zu unserer Tabelle. Ich habe also wieder den 80er Wert. Again, 80. Zweimal Pulver D3. And I have to use two times dental pulp. The answer is that the pulp of this tooth, the sixth tooth, has a medium chronic inflammation of the pulp. To my experience, it is not possible to cure this chronic pulpitis. So I would suggest to the patient, I would suggest to the patient to have this uh, tooth extracted. If you have to use twice the 3x ampoule to normalize the reading, then conservative measures are no more sufficient. Now, tooth number seven. It reads 73. Stimulation value. Using 5x. 4x. 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 3x. Too much. Also vier. 4x. Is it mandibular? Mandibular D4. We had again mandibular D4, but it's 4x. Uh, seven. With the tooth number 7. Yes. Und jetzt noch mal ein Reiz. Another stimulus. Und jetzt geht der Wert wieder hoch. Again, it goes up to 73. 73 as before. Und Jetzt gleich aus zur Kon Gegenkontrolle. Das bedeutet, der Zahn ist zu erhalten. Uh, that means that uh, she can keep this tooth. So, und nun gehen wir weiter so, auf, auf die Zahnlehre Strecke. Now we continue to the place where the wisdom tooth used to be. Und wenn das der Alveolarknochen ist. If this is the alveolar bone. Ja, dann setze ich den Reiz. Auf die Mitte des Alveolars und wenn sie ganz vorsichtig sind, ein wenig so rüber. And if I'm quite careful, I move over like so. Das mache ich jetzt mal. Ach so. Aber den Wert haben wir nicht. We first have to find the original reading. Reizwert 82. 82. Ja, jetzt uh, machen wir wieder Mandibular D6. Uh, now I use the Mandibular 6X. Ja. 6X. Geht nicht. 4. Geht nicht. 3. Geht nicht. 2x D3. Two times three x. Three times three x. Three times three x. Two times three x. Mandibular. Mandibular. We have here a fresh wound, which is not very old. Of course, we have a fresh wound here, which is not very old. The ausheilung is not yet abgeschlossen. It hasn't healed yet. We have also here another. So of course we have an inflammation here. 
But of course it is too early because the wound hasn't healed yet. Of course there is no point in counter checking with pulp because no tool is there anymore. But I like to stimulate each udonton twice, twice, just for the sake of security. Uh, so in this case, I stimulate once more, but I shall normalize with the nozode this time. Uh, with the nozode of jaw or mandibular osteitis. Again, I find the stimulation reading of 82. Now I use the nozote, which is taken from disease tissue. And I find the normalization. With, with two times nozote of mandibular osteitis. And uh, now I mark it, having used the nozode of jaw osteitis, and I used two times the 3x, I mark it two times ost for osteitis. The Focal diagnose has a difficulty here. If this wound were healed properly, I would say we have to re-operate, but the healing uh, hasn't been, uh, isn't completed yet. So uh, now this is not yet the moment to say anything. But uh, what I can say is that it would be a good plan to uh, have a post-operative treatment with biological medicine. Without biological medicine it will be very difficult to have it properly healed. Also das war jetzt die Diagnostik vom Unterkiefer rechts. So this has been the diagnosis of the lower jaw on the right hand side. Und hier müssen wir jetzt noch als Therapie And as a therapy, müssen wir noch verbergen. We mark now, es ist noch eine frische Wunde. There is a fresh wound. Das gehörte jetzt nach ungefähr acht Wochen kontrolliert. We should have to recheck this particular uh, part of it after eight weeks. And then we shall be able to tell whether it has healed properly or whether it has to be re-operated. Would this be after giving a series or just giving two ampules of these three? Wie würde die medikamentöse Behandlung, die biologische But how, how long will it take to do Are we ready, Stan? Okay. okay, we'll get started here this afternoon again. We're going to continue with Dan's diagnosis. And Dr. Kramer is going to test on which uh, segment or which quadrant of her body uh, most of her trouble lies in. And continue with the diagnosis. Please, Dr. Kramer. So long as you were still in here, have you the While you were still here, we uh, tested and, and investigated the right quadrant the right upper quadrant. But what's the other one? The right lower quadrant of the team. And the other three quadrants also completed the test. While you all were having lunch, we completed the rest of the testing. 
And uh, perhaps I can explain uh, briefly the results. So whatever you call that particular tool, number six uh, in the right lower toe is that the tool, which measure, measures too high, having a reading of 80, and uh, the organ preparation of dental pulp fits uh, only if you use two ampoules of three eggs. Also, we had to use two times three eggs of the mandibular preparation. That means that the chronic process that we found in the pulp here has already extended into the mandibular bone. If it uh, were only in the pulp, and had not extended into the mandibular bone, uh, it would have shown by um, the organ preparation of mandibular 4x would have been sufficient to normalize the reading. That would give us the hint that the jaw had not, is not yet touched. But seeing that we had to use two times uh, 3x to normalize the reading, we see it has already afflicted the jaw bone. In that case, if we would only treat the pulp, by extracting it, we would not be able to cover the chronic inflammation of that area. Therefore, with that too, for therapy, we shall, we shall have to suggest that the whole tooth be removed. Yeah. But it is important, this being the tooth, with the chronic pulpitis, that we do not only remove, extract the tooth, but that uh, all the tissue that has held the tooth has to be removed, and that also uh, an adequate part of the jawbone at this uh, at the same occasion has to be removed because the measurement has shown that also here we have wanted two um, amples of 3x to normalize. So to cure the patient from this local process, it is not enough just to have the tooth extracted but you have to extend surgery into the surrounding bone because the odontum which uh, is part of the organ called tooth is not uh, the, the tooth itself only with the pulp but also the tissue holding the tooth and the surrounding jaw bone belongs to it. If you only take away the tooth, the process stays there and 
And you only transform the focal process from a chronic pulpitis to a chronic osteitis. And uh, the patient cannot have his or her cure. Do you understand? What do you do if you have a mandibular canal right next to the tooth or a axillary sinus? at the apex, how do you clean and that area? Here. If the process has extended onto the mandibula, very carefully though, I also approach the mandibular canal because uh, we found that very rarely the process will cross this channel and go further across it. And actually it is so. If you are not sure whether enough bone was removed, during surgery, you can always measure him repeat the same test as we just did because the anesthesia doesn't make any difference in testing even when anesthetized the stimulation test will work and if we find during surgery that the osteitis is still present because the test then you will have to remove more of the jaw bone and when you have taken away more of the mandibular bone give the patient another test but uh, gradually you get a feeling for how much you will have to remove in those cases. But electroacupuncture is a device that makes it possible to have the patient tested also during anesthesia <laughs> and during surgery. Does that answer your question? We do not know why that is so, but we have done it perhaps ten times a week until we really found out and can be sure that it does not block the results. It just works. Do you find that it goes in, if it doesn't go in the mandibular account, can it go into the sinus? Uh, when, uh, yes, right into the sinus. Then we have to open the sinus. Clean the sinus. And sew it together again. And no problem. We are not afraid of the sinus. I just did that right before I came here, that's why I wanted to open it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of the sinus. Yes. Of course, I'm glad if I do not have to open the sinus. And I won't open it if not necessary. But if I see that um, <coughs> the sign is beyond, uh, looks yellowish and not blue, I know there's a chronic uh, process at the bottom of the sinus and then I prefer to open it and I drain it with uh, a uh, natural saline solution. See the number six tooth, that was to be said about the number six tooth.
Then the next tooth has an M4, which is mandibular 4X. Uh, and that is uh, rather normal. Nothing has to be done about this one. The wisdom tooth, as we uh, said, had just been extracted. <laughs> Electroacupuncture reveals a problem here. Because it is, was a very recent operation, just six weeks ago. And the wound hasn't quite closed yet. So we cannot tell yet how things will develop. How long do we wait? <laughs> <laughs> just going to say it. He just had to <laughs> resume breath. In this case, you will have to wait until the epithel has closed. And then you have to repeat the uh, uh, stimulation current test. As long as the wound is still open, I would not dare to, ex uh, to um, predict how it will be going on. Also, you cannot do anything at this stage now. Because if the control testing would prove that that uh, surgery uh, in a way did not fully succeed uh, so if you would have to reoperate you can't do it at the present moment you uh, only can redo surgery after the epithel was fully restored therefore it is good to wait at least for another eight weeks rather three months then have another test and then you will see if everything has calmed down and normalized or whether surgery has to be repeated this the same applies for the other um, wisdom teeth in the lower jaw and one of the wisdom teeth in the upper jaw links on the left side the operations uh, are too recent so I'm afraid this lady is not a good um, a demonstration object. Uh, these questions cannot be answered yet. But with the wisdom teeth, um, the upper wisdom tooth on the left side, that was uh, done in 1980. 77 is a normal reading and the maxilla 5x also is normal osteitis uh, 4x also is normal well uh, um, 6x or 5x would have been more favorable but uh, 4x is satisfactory. The patient is having more uh, difficulties in other parts of her mouth. The front and side uh, teeth um, in the right upper jaw. Uh, it is uh, Morris just only tooth number two with a right reads a stimulation uh, reading of 82 which is too high and with a ausgleich von zweimal maxilla den drei and zu viel. consequently it needs a two ampoules of three x maxilla to normalize which is too much the, erklärung is ganz einfach. the explanation is very easy uh, 
the the what sag mir für Stiftzahn? Uh, post two. Uh, ich werde mir nie merken. I'll never remember. Well, it has a post two. Die Wurzelbildung ist klinisch legeartig. And the apex clinically is according to uh, dental art. Wir sehen auch im apex keine Veränderung im Röntgenbild. Also, the x-ray shows that the apex is all right. Aber dieser Wert ist zu schlecht und der Ausgleich auch. But still, the reading is too high, and so is the normalization. So this patient will have to uh, sacrifice that tooth. I, there is no conservative therapy I could advise. The same applies uh, on the left upper jaw to the teeth one and two. And if I remember uh, correctly, both teeth have an apex filling. But you see, the number one tooth is not as bad as the number two tooth. And for the uh, doctor, uh, he's putting up his hand. What about the scar? Just a moment. And for the health of the patient, also the number, uh, the, the two tooth is more important than the number one tooth. But the values altogether, the readings are so bad. That I would not advise to have it treated conservatively. And if she were my patient, I would also extract those those two teeth. All I can tell you is what I would do if she were my patient. I know quite well that there are patients where you have to compromise. But it's your medical responsibility how far you go with compromising. And if it is if uh, if it is the teeth that are concerned, the dentist is not the only person to decide. Also, the medical doctor has to be asked. And last, not least, the patient herself. It is not your decision only as a dentist. But there are three people to decide that. That's why I would always suggest that do dentists and doctors work in teams. Uh, and uh, it is not only the practitioner, but the third man in the team <coughs> ought to be the ear, nose and throat doctor. Das ist die beste that is the best combination for such a team. Also oben, mein ganz so I would suggest, very simply, raus, raus, raus. extract those three teeth. Okay. From Dr. Kramer's experience, what percentage of teeth that have been endodontically treated need to be extracted? 100%? Does he find that 100%? This is a very bad result for dentists. I have in 15 years seven wurzelbehandelte Zähne gefunden, die nicht gestreut haben. In 15 years, I only found seven teeth with an apex filling that were that could remain that did not contaminate the surrounding that's a very low percentage indeed <coughs> but if you're familiar with fishing is a basic regulative system which I tried to explain to you yesterday a dead tooth 
der nicht mehr in den Kreislauf eingeschaltet ist und nicht mehr ins autonome Nervensystem But is no more connected in the circulation and in the autonomous nerve system. Der stört das ganze Grundsystem. Of course it does disturb the basic regulative system. Das können Sie nicht verändern. You just can't help it. Ein toter Tag ist, wie die Schulmedizin sagt, ein halb toter Tag. Uh, Orthodox medicine uh, thinks dead teeth are only half dead because the periodontium tissue still nourishes it but doesn't uh, the main nourishing go via the pulp and that is missing and that disturbs and stresses the basic regulative system. So you can't leave the tooth. Uh, for, as for myself, I will only apply apex fillings as a compromise therapy for a certain period of time. Particularly with young patients who have a high bodily resistance. Uh, and who are young enough and the, uh, the whole mouth and jaw region are still growing. Also, if you remove a tooth, the patient wants uh, a replacement and you know from experience that uh, as we all grow over older the pulp retreats and so uh, with an older person it is easier to with other fibrillation uh, so, uh, so to cut the preparation or reduce the tooth. To, re to reduce the tooth and to prepare for a crown. It's uh, much easier with an older patient. But uh, once you ask me, uh, I have to tell you that it is absolutely forbidden to Pre to reduce any tooth with those quick turbo machines, the, the quick boring machines, the turbine. You eine say turbines <laughs> with the turbines. Eine turbine macht zu viel Hitze. A turbine causes too much heat. Und eine turbine macht einen Unterdruck. And it also co causes a sub pressure. Und reißt das Gewebe aus den Dentinkanälchen heraus. And uh, drives the tissue out of the channels of the dentin. So, gibt es hier immer eine so always a chronic inflammation results in the tooth. In For the last 15 years I have no more used the turbine in my practice. I use normal diamonds I have a maximal cooling with water, but of course it takes twice the time to do the boring. But my patients hardly ever get a chronic pulpitis. This is a very grave decision. But I hope to live up to the time when the turbines will be sent away again. That is my opinion. And if you go on using the turbine, once I have informed you, that's your problem and not mine. Really want to hear that. <laughs> so that was the problem of the crowd and the reducing of the tooth. I'm wondering if you've ever, you know what N2 is, Sardini? 
in tubes, carcinogenic paste, root canal filling. It's used quite extensively in Europe also. Root canal, in tubes, and carcinogenic paste. Uh, what you put into the apex channel doesn't really matter. The best of all bad materials uh, would be gold. But also that is bad because it is an alien matter. It still is an alien body in the basic regulative system, whether it is amalgam or gold or iodoform or chloroform or whatsoever. A dead tooth or a semi-dead tooth cannot be brought back to life. The best prophylaxis is to keep the teeth healthy. And if you uh, leave a dead tooth in the mouth, that is not biological thinking, but mechanical thinking. You must get rid of the idea that the teeth have to stay in the mouth. Either it is healthy or it is ill, and if it is ill or dead, it has to be removed. Also, if your kidney can no more be repaired, it has to be removed. Uh, of course, nowadays surgery will implant a new kidney. But uh, in our field, that does not work. The problem is quite simple. If, for instance, you have an alveolar bone here and uh, put an implant into it to fix an artificial tooth to it, there is one place uh, in the gingiva where you have to leave the bone, get out of it. And uh, it, you just can't help it, always a chronic inflammation will result. And therefore every implant results uh, into a focus. It is better to have a kidney implanted or renewed. Because everything is closed, the body is closed. Do you see the difference? That does make a difference. Of course, it gives other problems. You do it immediately afterwards, it just sticks down. So, if you want to be a biological dentist, as a rule, apex fillings will remain a compromise and you must never implant that is impossible that is against the law of biological dentistry that would be the same as a Christian who goes along to kill another person <laughs> Just to watch. <laughs> also, you must not transplant teeth. I remember in the beginning I used to do so. So, uh, put 
post through the tooth right into the bone. And they still do that in Germany. But all I can tell you is very, very strong POSI result. And this patient here, you see in the replication fold, in the upper replication fold, we see a large scar. <laughs> and the large scar shows us that an apex filling has been performed. And now please don't be horrified. 